All right, this video covers the property of logs, and as you can see, I got a little crazy with some of the features of uh, smooth draw here, and I tried to color in the properties of logs to make this look pretty for you. There are five main properties that we're going to cover in this video, and then we'll show you a couple examples using those five main properties. The first property is what's called the inverse properties. There's actually two of them, and they piggyback off each other. The first says that log of base b of b to the x equals x. Basically, if your base of your log matches the base of your value inside of the log, then those bases cancel each other out and you just get x. The idea to prove this property is pretty easy. All you have to do is use the definition. The base b raised to the x, because remember, x's uh, are logs equal your exponent, equals what's inside of the log, which is b to the x. So obviously, b to the x equals b to the x, thus this is a true statement. The other way we can look at this is if you have a base b raised to log base b of x equals just x. Once again, you could just write down the definition of logs. A log base b of uh, log base b to the x equals obviously x. So log base b of b to the x equals x. So we basically end up with the same property that we've already proved. So keep in mind the inverse properties. The exponent property is a very simple one. And the exponent property says that if you have log base b of any value, that's the a, and you have an exponent, that exponent can come down in front of the log and be written as x times the log base b of that anything. So an exponent can fall down in front of a log. Very, very simple. We also have the change of base property. The change of base property says that if we don't like the current base we have, for example, log base b of a, if we don't like that base b, we could change it to, say, base c, where we would do log base c of a divided by log base c of the old base b, and that would change us to log base c. Now, this is kind of a, I don't want to say a dumb property, but a property that is really used for our calculator. For example, if we have this question, log base 3 of 22. This means what 3 raised to what number equals 22? We're trying to find out what number, if I take 3 raised to it, equals 22. Well, we don't have a log base 3 button on our calculator. Some of you probably could look through it, and there's a, especially with the newer calculators, you could find a way to make log base b. But I think it's much easier to use one of the two buttons we have on our calculator. We have a log button, which is base 10. We also have a natural log button, which is base e. So if I want to solve this equation or this um, expression very easily, all I got to do is use log base 10, for example. So I would do log base 10 of 22 divided by log base 10 of 3, and I would get my answer. So if I go to my calculator very, very quickly, instead of having to find where is that change of base um, function on the calculator, just do log base 10 of 22 divided by log base 10 of 3, and you have that log base 10 button, and you quickly get 2.8136. 2.8136. That means 3 raised to the 2.8136 is approximately 22. Why approximately? Because there are some more decimals here that I'm running off. So it allows us to easily work with the logs that we prefer, which is log 10 and log e. Likewise, if you don't like using log base 10, you could have approached this problem using log base e, so that would be the natural log of 22 divided by the natural log of 3. As long as your value 22 goes on top, your old base goes on the bottom, you would get the exact same answer, 2.8136. All right. The next property is the sum of logs property. I guarantee you've probably seen this property before. It says that the log base b of a plus the log base b of c equals the log base b of a times c. As long as your, as long as your bases match up, you can take the addition of two logs and combine that to log of the multiplication of those two values. So whatever value is here gets multiplied by whatever value is here inside of a single log. So this property allows us to go from two logs to one log, or it could go in reverse and allow me to go from having two logs to having one log. For a quick example, I could have log base 2 of 5 
plus log base 2 of 7. I can combine this and say, well, that is the same thing as log base 2 of 35, because 7 times 5 is 35. As long as I keep that base 2 the same across the board, it is a very simple property to use. The next property is called the difference of logs property. The difference of logs property states that if you have log base B of A minus log base B of C, you can combine that to one log with the division. So log base B of A divided by C. For example, if I have log base B of 22 minus log base B of 2, I can combine that and get log base B log base B of 11, because 22 divided by 2 is 11. So that works out. Now, be careful. This is a major misconception. Please don't ever use this property. Some students have a misconception that the log of A plus the log of B could be written as log of A plus B. That is 100% false. That is not true at all. The property states that a log of A plus a log of B would be log of A times B not a plus b. In fact, if you were to end up with a problem that looked like this, log of 2 plus x, for example, there's actually nothing you can do to this. This problem is at its final result. Nothing more can be done because we have no property that allows us to take addition inside of a log and break it apart. So that would be the final answer. All right, so we're going to look at a series of examples now. And the first examples are going to be where your instructions are to combine, or another word I can use for combine is condense, to one single logarithm. So this first, this first problem has three logs. Log base 3 of 5 plus log base 3 of 8 minus log base 3 of 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a final answer here that has one log. So here's my one log base 3. Now I have 5 plus 8. The 5 plus 8 can turn into multiplication when I bring them together. So 5 times 8. The subtraction of log base 3 of 2 would mean division of 2. So the 5 would be multiplied by the 8 because that's addition, but then the 2 would get divided since that's subtraction. Now you could clean that up. 5 times 8 is 40. 40 divided by 2 is 20. So this would be log base 3 of 20. Here's another one where I have 2 log 5 plus log 4. You might be asking, where's the base? Well, remember, if there is no base, it's implied it's log base 10. So first off, I'm going to use my exponent rule and put that 5, or put the exponent of 2 back up on top. So that would be log of 5 squared plus log of 4. I could then rewrite that as log of 25, that's 5 squared, plus log of 4. And then the last step is that I can combine these two logs together as long as I use multiplication. 25 times 4 is 100. So my final answer would be log of 100, which actually you could reduce really nicely because that is basically asking you the question, 10 raised to what equals 100? By the way, that's a question mark right there. So the answer would be 2 because 10 squared is 100. So my final answer to that entire problem would be 2. One more here is number 3 here. I have log of x plus 3 log y minus 4 log w. The first thing I could do is take these exponents and put them back up. So I have log of uh, 10 plus log y cubed minus log w to the fourth. And then finally, I can combine them all together by doing log of x times y cubed, because they were added, so they become multiplication, divided by w to the fourth. That is because of the subtraction. Now, we typically like to put parentheses around all that to make sure that it's log of that entire value, x times y cubed, all divided by w to the fourth. Here's three more problems. If you want to go ahead and hit pause and try them on your own, that's great. If not, you can continue to watch me solve them. All right, here's one where we have some log of addition. Be careful. Like I said, log of addition or log of subtraction, when that addition or that subtraction is inside the log, there's nothing you can do. However, since I am subtracting two logs, I could write this as the final problem of log of x plus 3, that was the quantity on top, divided by x minus 4. Why division? Because I was subtracting. When you're subtracting two logs, you are basically dividing what is inside of those logs. But I cannot do anything with the x plus 3 or the x minus 4. 
Here's another one. This is a little bit of a tricky one. First, I'm going to handle this three out in front. That three out in front can go up as an exponent. However, be very, very careful. It doesn't just go to the x. It doesn't just go to the two. It goes to the entire value, 2x. So when that three goes up there, that actually becomes 2x as a quantity cubed, which becomes 8x cubed. So be very, very careful. That three goes on the entire value, not just the x plus log of x minus 8. Subtraction inside of a log is a dead end. There's nothing more I can do there. The only thing that's left for me to do is put these together with multiplication because they're being added. So log of 8x cubed times x minus 8. Notice I'm using brackets to solidify the log of the entire value, 8x cubed times x minus 8. You could go ahead and distribute the 8x cubed if you really wanted to, but as long as it all stays with inside the log. Another one here, again, this exponent of 2 is going to go up to the entire value, 4x, so that becomes log of 16x squared, because that 2 goes on the 4 and the x, minus log of x plus 2 cubed. Once again, this 3 is going to go around to the entire value. Now, I'm just going to leave that as x plus 2 cubed. I guess you can come to the side and do some dirty work and actually cube that out, but that's only going to create more work inside that log. And remember, addition, subtraction inside of a log cannot be broken down any further. So it actually looks cleaner if I just leave it like that. But I can get a final value, which is 16x squared divided, because I had subtraction there, divided by x plus 2 cubed. And that is the nicest, cleanest answer that you can get. Once again, I understand that you could cube out x plus 2, but that would look a lot uglier on the bottom. I'd rather just leave it as that. All right, next up, we could expand logs. Expanding logs means taking one log or one notch log and expanding it to multiple logs. So here again, I have several things going on. I have multiplication of x to the fourth y on top, all divided by 7. So the multiplication could be split apart with addition, so natural log of x to the fourth plus natural log of y. The division could be changed with subtraction, and I could pull it apart as subtraction of log to the seventh. The only thing I would finally do is bring that exponent of 4 down. So I'd have 4 natural log of x plus natural log of y minus natural log of 7. Here's another one, a little bit more complicated, but I have x cubed times the square root of w on top, all divided by 8x. So the first thing I'm going to do is break apart the division and multiplication. So log of x cubed plus log of this q, or I'm sorry, the square root of w minus log of 8x. All right, so this 3 is going to come down in front, so I get 3 log x, plus I could actually look at a square root as a 1 half power and bring that 1 half power down in front, so 1 half log w. Now, this next part's a little bit tricky. I'm going to take this guy right here, log 8x, and I know that the multiplication can be broken down to addition, so that's log 8 plus log x. But I've got to be careful. That's all happening inside of here. And then there's a subtraction on that entire log. So that subtraction would need to go to the log 8 and go to the log x. So I'd get minus log 8 minus log x. So be careful. I know that that is a multiplication, which goes into um, you know, breaks apart into addition, but because that minus sign was in front of the entire log, it would go on both of them, because once again, both the 8 and the x were on the bottom being divided. So that's subtraction for division. Two more examples here. Natch log of a giant square root around x, y over 2. The first thing I have to do is bring out that 1 half, that's that 1 half power, that's the square root, which is covering all of that stuff. So that's what's going to happen there, so that, that 1 half power comes down in front. Then I'm going to leave that 1 half power in front and break apart the natural log of x plus the natural log of y minus the natural log of 2. Hopefully you understand why there's a plus sign between the natural log of x, natural log of y, and a minus sign for the natural log of 2, obviously because of the division. But notice what I had to do was the 1 half was in front of all of that. That 1 half, that square root, covered all of the logs, so I need to have that outside of everybody. So notice my use of brackets there, making sure that you understand that that is a square root around the entire value. Here's one last problem. I'm going to first separate all of this multiplication with addition. So I have log of x squared plus log of y to the fifth plus log of the cubed root 
of x, y to the fourth. All right, so first I'm going to bring down that 2, so I have 2 log x. That guy is done and good to go. Bring down the 5, 5 log y. That guy is done and good to go. Now I have to break apart this guy right here, essentially how I did back in problem number 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is put that 1 third in front of everybody, and then that's going to be log x plus 4 log y. Notice that the one-third um, power that I brought down as a one-third is going to go on the outside of those brackets because it surrounded the entire x times y to the fourth. And then the x times y to the fourth can be broken apart as log x plus four log y. If you want to, you could distribute that one-third and say one-third log x plus four-thirds log y. That would be fine as well. Last thing I want to do with you guys is work on some evaluating problems. These are problems where you're going to use the change of base. For example, log base 5 of 22. This is basically saying 5 raised to what value equals 22? Because remember, logs equal the exponent. Well, to solve this, I want to do this very quickly on my calculator. I know, once again, that you could use those special features of your calculator and change the base to 5, but I'd rather just use the log button, log base 10. So that'd be log 22 over log 5. If I type that into my calculator very quickly, I get my answer. Log 22, close close the parenthesis, divided by log 5, close that parenthesis, and I get my answer very quickly, and I'm going to want four decimals here, 1.9206. I always like to check my work and do 5 raised to 1.9206, just to confirm that I do get something very, very close to 22, and I do. Here's another one, log base 784. This time I'm going to use the natural log, the natural log of 184, divided by the natural log of 7. Again, a nice quick way to use my calculator to get the answer, because remember this is saying 7 raised to what equals 184. And I don't know the answer to that, and I don't have a quick log base 7 button on my calculator, but I do have a natural log very quickly at hand. So natural log of 184, close that parenthesis, divided by the natural log of 7, and I get 2.6799. 2.6799. Once again, I'd like to check my answer by doing 7 raised to 2.6799, and I do get something extremely close to 184. So, nice easy way to use the change of base rule to find logs very, very quickly. I know that you do have the features on your calculator that can get those for you, but using the natural log and the regular log are nice and quick since you have those buttons right there on the front of your calculator. All right, that's it for properties of logs.